فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today we're going to start the explanation of the kitab al isbah fi bayan manhaj al salaf fi al tarbiyah wal islah so the book is called al isbah fi bayan manhaj al salaf fi al tarbiyah wal islah fi bayan منهج السلف في التربية في بيان منهج السلف في التربية والإصلاح. So this is the book, inshallah, taala, in which we're going to start today. This kitab is written by my sheikh, the sheikh. Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan and a Shaykh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan he resides in a mantiqa called Ha'il that is where he lives and that's where the Shaykh Hafidahullah ta'ala he resides in and he lives as Shaykh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan inshallah as we're going to see bi'ithni Allah al-Kareem this book, he wrote it to clarify the manhaj of the Salaf in two matters. Fit tarbiyah in cultivation and al-islah perfecting the affairs of the people. If a person wants to do tarbiyah of a people, he wants to nurture them. He wants to correct their misconceptions and cure them from the problems and the ills of, their, of that community, how was the methodology of the Salaf in that way? How did they do it? Today we find organizations, Islamic ISOCs, we find masajids, youth projects. A lot of them, they put so much work towards the youth. And they have, a lot of them have sincere intentions to change the affairs of these youngsters and to change the affairs of the students who are studying universities and the community in general. But the way that they deal with it and the way that they try to cure it, a lot of the times if you observe it is, is incorrect, it's wrong. So because of that, for 10 to 15, 20 years this organization is running but it hasn't really done anything for the community. So inshallah ta'ala, this book from its name is Al-Isbah, it's going to clarify for us and it's, all, it's going to lighten for us the methodology of the pious predecessors and how they rectified situations and how they cultivated. The reason why we keep bringing the people back to the Manhaj Salaf in the book inshallah ta'ala is going to show us a lot of that and explain to us is that my beloved brothers and sisters, they succeeded. They passed the test. They passed this test in making sure that they, they cultivate their community correctly. They did it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in their hands Mashariq al ardi wa Magharibiha. The east and the west, Allah gave it to them. So their da'wah spread the earth. It didn't just stick to their community. So what we need is to ask ourselves these people's efforts has been proven to pass. So we want to be successful in our da'wah and the things that we're doing. The path that we need to tread on is that path. The poet, he said, You are looking for success, but you haven't taken its path. For verily, the boat does not sail on the shore. 
success has a path, has a road. And for you to, for you to get to where you want, fast and effectively, there's a path already set for it. So there's no need for you to come and then try and test paths. So inshallah ta'ala, this is the beauty of this book. Some places I'm going to read him, I'm going to read the Arabic and then I'm going to translate and explain it. And some places I'm just going to go o the overall meaning of what he's trying to say here. Because as you can see the book is very big. What really matters to us is that the book has principles. The author rahimahullah, he wrote principles in this book. And we're going to see how many principles they are. Inshallah ta'ala is going to mention that in the muqaddimah. What really concerns us is the uh, qawa'id, the principles. That's what we're going to focus on. As for the explanation that he put on it, I will take the quotes on there. And the explanation here and there. And as you're going to see, this book initially, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan, he took it and he read it on his teacher. And his teacher was who? Al-Allama, Sheikh Salih ibn Fawzan al-Fawzan. Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan originally wrote these principles and he read it on Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan. It's recorded and it's on the internet. Him reading it on the Sheikh. The Sheikh is listening, Sheikh Fawzan is listening. And then Sheikh Fawzan is doing ta'liqat on the book. Many ta'liq on what Sheikh uh, Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan is reading. I'm what he's saying. Sheikh Fawzan is yu'alliq After that, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan, he went home. He added more principles to the book. He added more principles to the book and then he sent the book over to Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan. Sheikh Fawzan read it. He underlined the points that he think he should take out and the things that he should change. And Sheikh Salah, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salah al-Ubaylan did as he was told by Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan. And then the book came out. And Sheikh Fawzan praised the book after that. This teaches us how those who had knowledge still went back to the scholars. And they checked with the scholars. Words, letters. Sheikh Fawzan would say, this word is not appropriate. Don't use this word. Change this word to this word. And I remember asking Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salah al-Ubaylan myself. I said to him, Sheikh, did, was, was he telling you to take little words out? He's like, yes. He would tell him to remove a word. And he would say, change that word with that word. And he said, I would underline it and I'll change it exactly to the word he told me. And he's going to mention that in the Muqaddimah himself. So he says in the Muqaddimah after he does the Khutbah al-Hajjah, he says, ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعَدُ to proceed. فَإِنَّ مِنْ وَاجِبِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ He starts the Muqaddimah of the book, Shaykh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan. فَإِنَّ مِنْ وَاجِبِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ That which is obligatory on the people of knowledge is الْقِيَامَ بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ is to stand to stand with what? To stand with the command of Allah. That which Allah commanded you to stand up and uh, accomplish it. Ta'aliman wa dirasa. In terms of the teaching and educating. Kama qala ta'ala as Allah said in the Quran, ma kana li basharin. It is not for a person. And yu'tiyahu Allah that Allah gives to him. Al-kitaba wal-hikmah. Al-kitaba wal-hukmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives him the kitab. Allah gives him leadership. Allah gives him a nubuwa, prophecy. ثُمَّ يَقُولَ لِلنَّاسِ Then he says to the people, كُونُوا عِبَادًا لِي مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Be slaves for me besides Allah. وَلَكِنْ كُونُوا رَبَّانِينَ But rather, be رَبَّانِيين رَبَّانِيين آهُ الَّذِي يُرَبِّ النَّاسَ بِسِغَارِ الْعِلْمِ قَبْلَ كِبَارِ A Rabbani is the one who nurtures the people on small knowledge before he goes and talks to them about big knowledge. وَلَكِنْ كُونُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابَ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ And then he goes on to say in Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan, he says, حَفِظَهُ اللَّهِ وَذَلِكَ يَتَطَلَّبُ مِنْهُمُ الدَّعْوَةَ إِلَى اللَّهِ So this ayah shows that what is requested from us is a da'wah to Allah, to call to Allah. وَتَطْهِيرَ شَرْعِهِ وَمِنْهَاجِهِ and that we also purify what? We purify his religion 
and his legislation. Clean it. We clear it, clean it. What is it that we clean it from? from it? Three things we need to clean from it. What are the three things that we need to clean from this religion? A shirk. Wal bid'ah. Wal ma'asi. Shirk, which is associating partners with Allah. Bid'ah, which is innovation. And al ma'asi, which is sins. These three things we have to purify them and cleanse them from what? Huh? Cleanse them from the religion. And that we don't say about Allah except the truth. وَيَحْذَرُ مِنْ طَرِيقَةِ عُلَمَاءِ الْيَهُودِ الَّذِينَ يَلْبِسُونَ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ And that we also warn from the path of the Jews who are mixing the truth with the falsehood. وَيَكْتُمُونَ And they are also concealing it. وَيَخْفُونَهُ وَيُحَرِّفُونَ They are also hiding it and they are distorting it. أَوْ يَلْوُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ Or, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, وَمِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا أُمَّةٌ يَهْدُونَ بِالْحَقِّ وَبِهِ يَعْدِلُونَ They try to distort the verses with their tongues. They try to change its meaning and sway the people away from the truth. And they try to distort it by physically changing what the verse actually says. Allah says in the, in the ayah, وَمِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا أُمَّةٌ From the ummah are those who we created. يَهْدُونَ بِالْحَقِّ They guide to the truth. From within the ummah there are people, Allah says, يَهْدُونَ بِالْحَقِّ They guide to the truth. There are people like that. And the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَا تَزَالُ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أُمَّتِي قَائِمَةً بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ That there is always a people who are steadfast and upright in what? بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ In the command of who? In the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated this in his Sahih. And when he narrated it in Kitab al-Ihtisami bil-Kitab wa Sunnah, this hadith, he said that those who are steadfast upon the truth are who? Hum ahlul ilmi, it's the people of knowledge. Qal al-Zuhri ibn Shihab al-Zuhri said, Kana ulama'una yaqulun, our scholars used to say, Al-Ihtisamu bil-Sunnati huwa al-Najah. That holding on to the Sunnah is what success lies in. Malik ibn Anas in Rahimahullah, he said, As-Sunnatu safinatu Nuh. مَنْ رَكِبَهَا نَجَى وَمَنْ تَخَلَّفَ عَنْهَا غَرِقَ That the sunnah is the boat of Nabiullah Nuh. Uh, Nabiullah uh, Nuh, naam. The sunnah is like the boat, it's like the ark of Nuh. مَنْ رَكِبَهَا Whoever went on that ark that day, what happened? نَجَى They will become successful, right? They would not have drowned. وَمَنْ تَخَلَّفَ And anyone who didn't go on that ark of Nuh, السلام, what happened to them? Gharika, he drowned, right? The Sunnah is like that. Anyone who holds on to the Sunnah will find success. And he would pass. And the one who didn't, then he's going to drown. So the, bow, the, uh, so the Ark of Nuh was the, uh, is the Sunnah. That's what the author, Rahimahullah, said. And then after that, he said, after a while, he says, وَمِنْهُ نَجَاءَ تَصْنِيفُ هَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةِ وَقَدْ بَدَأْتُ فِي كِتَابَتِهَا عَامْ ثَلَاثَ عَشَرَ وَأَرْبَعْمِئَةٍ بَعْدَ الْأَلْفِ وَقَرَأْتُ بِضْعَ عَشَرَ تَقَاعِدَةً مِنْهَا عَلَى شَيْخِنَا صَاحِبَ الْفَضِيلَةِ الْعَلَّامَةِ الْمُحَقِّقِ صَالِحِ بْنُ فَوْزَانَ الْفَوْزَانِ وَعَلَّقَ عَلَيْهَا فِي حِينِ وهي مسجلة في ثلاثة أشرطة ثم إن الله تبارك وتعالى يسر لي إتمامها حيث بلغت أربعا وخمسين قاعدة وبعثت بها إلى فضيلته وراجعها وأشار علي بحذف بحذف وتعديل بعض ما جاء فيها وعدلت حذفت ما أشار به فضيلته جزاه الله خيرا هذا والله أسأل أن يتقبلها ويجعلها من الباقيات الصالحات وأن ينفع بها والحمد لله رب العالمين. He says and then this all, this book came this book I wrote and he wrote it when the year was 1413 هجرية. He said, وَقَرَأْتُ I read بِضْعَ عَشْرَةَ قَاعِدَةً 50, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, that's بِضْعَ That's the amount, from 13 to 19. Roughly within that number I read on Sheikh Salah Al-Fawzan. Look what he said. عَلَى شَيْخِنَا صَاحِبَ الْفَضِيلَةِ الْعَلَّامَةِ الْمُحَقِّقِ Sheikh Salah Ibn Fawzan Al-Fawzan. I read on him. And he would comment on those points. And inshallah, it's in the book right now. He transcribed it. 
from the ashrita and he put it in here. So we're going to see, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to see the what? We're going to see the ta'liqat, meaning the commentary. Sheikh Salah Fawzan put on there. وَهِيَ مُسَجَّلَةٌ And it's recorded. فِي ثَلَاثَةِ أَشْرِطَةٍ It's recorded in three tapes. ثُمَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى يَسَّرَ لِي إِتْمَامَهَا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blessed me to complete it. حَيْثُ بَلَغَتْ أَرْبَعَ وَخَمْسِينَ قَاعِدٍ I read some of it on him, Sheikh Salah Fawzan. And then he went back to his city. And then what he did is he carried on until he completed it to what? Fifty-four قَاعِدَة when he finished it, he said, biha ila I sent it to him. He revised it. He then commanded me to change some things. And he also told me to remove some things. which has come in it. I removed what he told me to remove. And I changed what he told me to change. Jazakallahu khayran. May Allah reward him good. And this him saying, Jazakallahu khayran, reminds me of the line of poetry. إِذَا أَفَادَكَ إِنْسَانٌ بِفَائِدَةٍ فَأَكْثِرْ مِنَ الْعُلُومِ فَأَكْثِرْ شُكْرَهُ أَبَدًا وَقُلْ فُلَانٌ جَزَاهُ اللَّهُ صَالِحَةً أَفَادَنِيهَا وَأَلْقِ الْكِبْرَ وَالْحَسَدَ If somebody benefits you something good and they educate you and they teach you and you learn from them فَأَكْثِرْ Increase in showing gratitude فَأَكْثِرْ شُكْرَهُ أَبَدًا Show a lot of gratitude to that person who taught you, who educated you. وَقُلْ أَنْ سَيْ فُلَانُ سَوَنْسَوْ جَزَاهُ اللَّهُ صَالِحَةً أما جزاه الله صالحة أو الله رواد من جد أفادنيها he benefited me this وَأَلْقِ الْكِبْرَ وَالْحَسَدَ and get rid of arrogance and jealousy get rid of that so the shaykh رحمه الله here he shows gratitude towards his shaykh shaykh صالح شيخ صالح ابن فوزان الفوزان Insha'Allah ta'ala. So now we're, we're going to start the Kitab Ibn Lillah al -Karim. We have an idea of the book. Um, the Shaykh who authored this book is still alive. He still lives in Ha'il. He still lives there. And he's a person who I saw from him. Salamatul Aqeedah. His Aqeedah is sound. And a person who is Aminun bi ilmihi implements his knowledge. Shaykh Abdullah ibn Salah al-Ubaylan was requested to come to the UK for a conference. So he said, okay, no problem. A while, the visa came out. He got accepted. And when he got accepted and the visa was given to him, he called the organization and he said to them, I won't be able to come. So they said, why can't you come? He said, my mom doesn't let me. My mom hasn't allowed me to go. She said, you can't go to the UK. And so because of that, I am not going to come. He's a man who he himself He's a granddad. Are you with me, brothers? But at that age, he believes that his mother didn't let him, so he listens to his mom. So he's a person like that. Amirun, he implements his knowledge. May Allah make us those who learn and, edu uh, and, and benefit from the knowledge that we have. Al Qaidatul Ula, the first Qaida. So, write the principles, and we explain that principle. We go to the next principle, and we explain that principle, inshallah. Al Qa'idatul Ula, the first principle. Addinu mabniyun ala aslaini azimain. The religion is built on two fundamental principles. The religion is built upon two fundamental principles. Al ikhlas or sincerity, that's, that's the first one. And the second is Wal Mutaba'a lin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first one is sincerity, and the second one is following and adhering to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's way. So the religion is built upon these two foundations. Mabniyun ala aslaini azimain. Al-ikhlas of sincerity. Wal-mutaba'ah lin-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to be what? It's to be in accordance to who? And it's to be in accordance to the sunnah of the messenger. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Let's take the first one of the two. Al-ikhlas of sincerity. Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, ayah 125. 
in Surah An-Nisa, ayah 125, Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ Allah says, who is better? In terms of religion, who's, who's, who's better than this person's religion? مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ The person who directs his face towards Allah. مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ He directs himself towards Allah. That's ikhlas. وَهُوَ مُحْسِنَّ Is in accordance to the sunnah. وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ means what? In accordance to the to be in accordance to the sunnah. So the ayah says, who is greater than the person who comes with sincerity? The answer to that question is nothing. He directs himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the definition we always give to ikhlas is what? Ikhlasuna lillahi صَفِّ الْقَلْبَ مِنْ إِرَادَةٍ سِوَاهُ فَاحْذَرْ يَا فَطِنْ إِخْلَاصُنَا لِلَّهِ صَفِّ الْقَلْبَ مِنْ إِرَادَةٍ سِوَاهُ فَاحْذَرْ يَا فَطِنْ إِخْلَاصُنَا Our sincerity is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِخْلَاصُنَا لِلَّهِ صَفِّ الْقَلْبَ مِنْ is to purify your heart from صَفِّ الْقَلْبَ مِنْ إِرَادَةٍ Any want to anything other than Allah. There's nothing else that you want and there's nothing else that you you wish anything from except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا In Surah Al-Bayyina, Ayah 5. Surah Al-Bayyina, Ayah 5, Allah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا They were not commanded. إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ Except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Sincerity in the religion for Allah. That's what we were commanded. Brothers and sisters, Ikhlas is the first pillar of any action. If you don't come with sincerity in the action that you're doing, you will not get a reward for it. And that is why Allah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا I didn't command them anything. إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلُصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Except that they do this with sincerity. Ikhlas, only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ in Surah Al-Zumar, Ayah 11, Allah says, قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ I have commanded أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ I was commanded أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ to worship Allah مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ I was commanded to worship Allah in a state of sincerity. I was told and I was commanded to worship Allah with what? With sincerity. That was what I was commanded. The command that was put to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the same command that every one of us is told to go through. And that's why the Prophet والسلام, said in the hadith in which Bukhari and Muslim both narrated من حديث أمير المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب إنما الأعمال بالنيات That verily every action is what is intended from it. Every action is what? It is what is intended from it. So that's the first thing. The second pillar that the religion stands on is Mutaba'atun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Following the messenger Alayhi salatu wa salam Following the messenger means That you are in accordance to his sunnah That whatever action that you're doing You're doing it how he did it Alayhi salatu wa salam When we say following the messenger Alayhi salatu wa salam What we mean is that You follow him in doing what he did and you follow him in staying away from what he stayed away from. As Imam Shafi'i said, as Hafiz al Hajjar brings in Fatul Bariyu, and Imam Shafi'i said, فَإِنَّا نَتَّبِعُ السُّنَّةَ فِعْلًا وَتَرْكًا That we follow the Sunnah fi'lan in doing what the Prophet did. وَتَرْكًا And we follow the Sunnah by leaving off that which by that which that the Prophet left. Mutaba'at al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi an yakun al-amal and what does it mean following the Prophet is that your action is muwafiqan in accordance lima shara'ahu in that which he legislated sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah said in the Quran in Surah Al-Mulk 
ayah 2 الذي خلق الموت Allah is the one who created death والحياتا and Allah is the one who created life ليبلوكم so he can test you test which one who who's he going to test ayyukum which of you is ahsanu amala whichever of you is the best in actions i want you to ponder here because the ayah says ahsanukum amalan the best of you in action it does not say aktharukum amala it doesn't say which of, of whichever of you has the most action it is it says the one who has the best of actions why is it the best of actions because religion of islam it doesn't look at quantity what does it look at quality it's quantity or quality which one huh it is it is in the sharia it's the quality it's not the quality uh, the quantity it's not the amount of ibadat that you come with because that's why allah says ahsanukum amala the best of actions fadhil al-iyad rahimahullah he said ahsanu amala means akhlasuhu wa aswabuh fadhil ibn iyad said akhlasuhu wa aswabuh means that which is done with sincerity and that which is in accordance to the sunnah al khalisu ma kana lillah wa as sawabu ma kana ala as sunnah ikhlas means that which is done for allah's sake and uh, sawab means correct means that which is in accordance to the that which is in accordance to the sunnah that which is in accordance to the sunnah look at how shaitan has fooled the people today you find a person who says in order for me to ask allah i have to go through the prophet so brothers are you listening so he says i want to go through the prophet so the ibadah which is the rights of allah who is he going through he's going through the prophet where he should have what he should have asked allah directly subhanahu wa ta'ala but when it comes to legislation he doesn't want to go through the prophet when it comes from when it comes to the legislation and the shara'i and the ahkam he wants to do it based on how he wants he wants to make his own legislation and worship Allah based on that. That's why Allah said in the Quran, "Afman zuyina lahu su amalihi faraahu hasana." These people, their evil deeds have been beautified for them. Allah says, "Qul hal nubbiukum bil aksharin a'mala al-ladin al-dhal sa'ayum fi al-hayat al-dunya wa hum yahsabun anhum yuhsinun sunaa." Allah said, "Shall I tell you?" those who are destroyed it's those people who are doing a deed yahsabuna annahum yuhsinuna sunaa but they believe in that deed of theirs that they are doing good this evil deed of theirs they think that they're doing good they're coming with innovation when in reality allah is going to reject this innovation from them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa radd رواه الشيخان وهذا لفظ لمسلم that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said anybody who does an action and that action is not from our affairs meaning it's not from our religion فهو رد it is rejected to in, the, in this person's face اي مردود على صاحبه this person this action will not be accepted from them do you love allah and his messenger if you do then there's an ayah to test that your iman and your claim of loving allah and his messenger is is going to be put to the test but in the salaf they used to say ayatul imtihan the verse of testing and that is qala ta'ala allah says in surah al imran ayah 31 allah says qul say to the muhammad in kuntum tuhibbun allah if you love allah fattabi'uni follow me nabiullah muhammad yuhibbukum allah allah will love you 
So do you claim that you love Allah? If you really claim that you love Allah, then follow the Messenger alayhi salatu wassalam. Follow the Messenger alayhi salatu wassalam. وَلِذَلِكَ حَسَنَ الْبَصْرِيُّ He said, دَعَى قَوْمٌ A group of people claim مَحَبَّةَ اللَّهِ فَبْتَلَاهُمُ اللَّهُ بِهَذِي الْآيَةِ A group of people claim the love of Allah. And Allah tested them with this verse. Allah said to them, do you love Allah? Okay, follow the messenger. If you're not following the messenger, then your claim that you love Allah is what? It's questionable. It's questionable. And then Shaykh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan said, وَالنَّاسُ مُنْقَسِمُونَ بِحَسَبِ هَذَيْنِ الْأَصْلَيْنِ إِلَى أَرْبَعَةِ أَقْسَامِ The people are divided in four when it comes to this principle today. This principle of what? That the religion is built upon two foundations, two fundamental foundations. Are you with me? Al-Ikhlas wa mutaba'at al-Rasul, right? Sincerity and following the Messenger. The Shaykh said that the people, when it comes to this principle, they are divided and they are categorized into four. The first one is Ahlul Ikhlas lil ma'budi wal mutaba'a. The first are the ones who have sincerity and they are in accordance to the Sunnah. These people are Ahlul Ikhlas, they are people of sincerity. They worship Allah based on what? On sincerity. And they are also in accordance to the what? To the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَأَعْمَالُهُمْ كُلُّهَا لِلَّهِ All of their action is for Allah. وَأَقْوَالُهُمْ لِلَّهِ Their speech is for Allah. وَعَطَاؤُهُمْ لِلَّهِ They give for Allah. وَمَنْعُهُمْ لِلَّهِ Their refusal of something is for Allah when they refuse. وَحُبُّهُمْ لِلَّهِ Their love is for Allah. وَبُغْضُهُمْ لِلَّهِ They hate for Allah. فَمُعَامَلَتُهُمْ ظَاهِرًا وَبَاطِرًا لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ وَحْدًا Their dealings, their external dealings and their internal dealings, all of it is for Allah alone. لَا يُرِيدُونَ بِذَلِكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا they don't want from the people any praise and any reward. They don't. All of it is for Allah. وَلَبْتِغَاءَ جَاهِلْ عِنْدَهُمْ And they're not trying to attain from the people any station or any rank that they want the people to put them in. So that's what they are. وَكَذَلِكَ أَعْمَالُهُمْ And also their actions are كُلُّهَا All of it. وَعِبَادَتُهُمْ And also their ibadah is what? مُوَافِقَةُ لِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ is in accordance to the command of Allah. وَلِمَا يُحِبُّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ And it is also in accordance to that which Allah loves and is pleased with. My beloved brothers and sisters, when you come with an action that is not sanctioned by Allah, is not legislated by Allah, how do you know Allah loves this action? And how do you know Allah is pleased with this action? Because there is no way for you to know that Allah loves something and is pleased with something except through who? The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Al-Junaid rahimahullah, what did he say? He said, At-Turuq, the path. At-Turuq kulluha masduda. All of the paths are blocked. Illa tariqa maliqatafa athara muhammadin. Except the one who takes the path of the Prophet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. All doors are closed. All roads are closed to Allah. It's T-junction. It's closed. The only path that is open in which you can gain happiness from Allah, Allah will be pleased with you, Allah will forgive you, Allah will shower His blessings on you, is the path in which the Prophet ﷺ treaded on. So these people, every single thing that they do is in accordance to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sanctioned on whose tongue? The Messenger ﷺ. Walidhalika, my sisters and brothers, When the person says, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ When the person says, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ What is it that they're saying? They are saying, طَاعَتُهُ فِي مَا أَمَرْ وَتَصْدِيقُهُ فِي مَا أَخْبَرْ وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا نَهَا عَنْهُ وَزَجَرْ وَأَلَّا يُعْبَدَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِمَا شَرَعْ That's what you're saying. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ That's what he means. طَاعَتُهُ فِي مَا أَمَرْ Obeying him in that which he commands. 
and trusting and believing everything which he informed you of. Staying away from that which he prohibited for you from. And that Allah is not worshipped except with that which he what? He legislated alayhi salatu wasalam.